Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sharbani, Senior Consultant at Shaker Eye Hospital, Bangalore. Today I am going to discuss about pupillary light reflex and its importance. So first let's know what is pupil. Pupil is basically a dark circular opening at the center of the iris of the eye which regulates the amount of light entering inside the eye into the retina. By analogy with the camera, we can say that the pupil is an equivalent to the aperture of the camera whereby the light entry inside is regulated. So now what is the pupillary light reflex? Pupillary light reflex is a reflex or response in response to uh, the amount of light, the intensity of light entering into the eye whereby the pupil size is controlled and regulated and it helps us in assisting, uh, assists us in uh, adaptation of vision to different conditions of light. So what happens is basically is that when it is a dark room or dim uh, light is there in the room, the pupil size increases so it becomes dilated and when the pupil size uh, is constricted then it is response to intensity of light, high intensity of light. When there is a bright uh, light showing to, to the eye then the pupil size constricts. Now what is direct pupillary reflex and what is indirect or consensual pupillary reflex? Now suppose uh, light is shown to the left eye. So left eye pupil will constrict under normal conditions. This is called direct pupillary reflex. What happens to the other eye that is the right eye? The right eye will also pupil uh, will also constrict. This is the indirect or consensual light reflex. Now let us uh, discuss about the neural pathway or the neuroanatomy behind this uh, pupillary light reflex. So what happens is basically uh, when the light enters into the eye through the pupil, the light enters and falls into the retinal ganglion cells in the, at the retina at the back of the eye. Then the signal is transmitted through the optic nerve fibers that is the second cranial nerve, the optic nerve it goes to the uh, brain stem at the level of midbrain to the pretectal nucleus. From the pretectal nucleus the fibers are crossed and uncrossed and sent to the uh, edinger westphal nucleus at the midbrain level from where uh, the oculomotor nerve carries the motor output to the ciliary ganglion and then from there to the sphincter pupillary muscle. So these crossed and uncrossed fibers from the pretectal nucleus to the edinger westphal nucleus are responsible for the direct and indirect pupillary reflex. The uncrossed fibers continue to the same side providing the uh, direct pupillary reflex uh, and constriction of the same side pupil while the other side pupil constriction happens due to the crossed fibers. So this is basically to put it in simple words, uh, the simple uh, anatomy is that the retina to optic nerve to midbrain uh, pretectal nucleus and edinger westphal nucleus then through the oculomotor nerve there is the motor output which goes to the sphincter muscle of the iris which controls the pupil size and causes constriction dilatation. So uh, this is uh, to be uh, in short the neuroanatomy of uh, pupillary light reflex. Now coming to the importance that is the clinical significance. Why is it important to know about the pupillary light reflex? So it is an important uh, predictive diagnostic tool which can be used for assessing the integrity of the sensory and motor functions of the eye. Also it is important in emergency uh, conditions where a patient is seen uh, by an emergency physician. Uh, and he tries to detect whether there is any brainstem dysfunction by assessing the pupillary light reflex. So what happens in any uh, kind of optic nerve damage or retina uh, problem like a retinal detachment or a brainstem dysfunction, uh, any midbrain lesions, any brain tumors, uh, any other diseases which affect these uh, systems and also the oculomotor nerve damage also this can affect and uh, this pupillary light reflex. So there will be abnormal pupillary light reflex in that condition which is called uh, afferent pupillary defect or efferent pupillary defects uh, where instead of constriction the pupil can get dilated in response to light or it can sometimes uh, show no reaction or can be non-reactive. So that is how uh, we know how pupillary light reflex is uh, affecting the eye and also not only the eye the brainstem uh, dysfunction can also be assessed with the help of this pupillary light reflex that is how it is very important uh, clinically very relevant uh, this simple test which can detect uh, not only in uh, uh, detecting the sensory and motor functions of the eye but also in assessing any brainstem dysfunction so uh, that is all for today's discussion thank you